So we've got uh, two labs for that. We've got the user space segment registers, which is just going to pull the values out in user space. It just uses a move instruction. It's going to go ahead and put them into memory to be read. And then we've got a kernel version of the same. So let's go ahead and do those two labs right now. All right, so in your code, you have user segment registers. You can see there's a variety of functions defined, read CS, DS, etc. These are passing in a pointer to a short. That is going to be the location where the value of these registers is written back to. If we look at the assembly, it's just, you know, super trivial information saying, you know, take the CS register and move it to, you know, the first argument, RCX, whatever that points to in memory, just move it there. And so that's going to be pointing to uh, the, the parameters that are passed. So just pass an address of some local variable and then CS gets put into there. Same thing for SS and so forth. So what you need to do is set a breakpoint at the end here. Make sure that this is set for the startup project and go ahead and start it in your debugger. And once we do that, we can see it just prints out CS is hex 33, SS is hex 2B. So for each of these, we could parse them and there are 16, these values are 16 bit, you know, data structures. So what are the values? Well, RPL, the least significant two bits is three here, 3333, three, three, three. looks like it's threes all the way down. Table indicator is zeros all the way down. So everybody is pointing at the GDT and the indices seem to be different. So six, five, 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 a five. All right, great. We're just gonna throw that into our slides and you know take a look at it later. Now let's see what things look like from kernel space. So to do that, you would right click on your K segment registers, build it, wait till you find the output path of where it's storing your kernel driver, copy the output path, go ahead and put that in to explore, copy the kernel driver, and move over to your debuggable system. Paste your kernel driver stuff in and go ahead and run the commands to install it. So I go ahead and do that. It says install this driver anyways. It takes a minute to actually run the driver and then we'll go back and look at it in the kernel debugger to see what it says. All right, here's what it says. Same kind of code, so it just says, all right, segment register is 10, 18, 2B, etc. RPL is 00, 3333, GDT all the way down, and different indices, 2, 3, 5, 5, A, 5. Again, I'm just going to go through that back into a table in the slides, but uh, you should probably pause now and go ahead and do this yourself and see that you can get the same output as me. Okay, so what did I get in my tables? I have for user space segments, I have RPL of three all the way down the line, like I said, GDT all the way down the line. But over here in kernel, I have RPL of zero in two places and threes everywhere else. So we have things not the same right here. So for the CS and SS, we seem to have different values, both for the indices, this is two and three, this is six and five, and for the RPLs. So threes and zeros. So that seems to be correlated with the fact that this is in kernel and this is in user space. And then for the rest of this, everything seems to be the same in user space versus kernel space. Um, you know, it's basically all threes. So it's all as if it was, you know, user spacey stuff. And there could be a variety of reasons for that, which, you know, we could speculate on or we can just wait till we explain it. All right, so some inferences from this is that uh, Windows maintains, you know, different CS and SS segment selectors for user space and kernel space, right? So you had different indices between user space and kernel space, two and three versus six and five. And so that's one clear difference. Uh, Windows x86-64 doesn't seem to change the DS, ES, FS, or GS segment selectors when moving between user space and kernel space. And I... Uh, highlight segment selector here because that's not all that potentially could change the definition of segments. But it doesn't seem to change those segment selectors between user space and kernel space. 
And the most important inference from that table was that the RPL field of the CS and SS segments seems to correlate with the ring for kernel and user space. All right, so that is our first little bit of information that we needed for finding information about how the privilege rings work. So one last uh, reiteration of segmentation and the translation of linear uh, logical to linear addresses. You've got logical addresses, which are 16-bit segment selector, which is probably going to be in one of those. It can either be in you know, a far pointer, or it can be implicitly being used by the segment selectors like CS, SS, etc. You've got a offset, the typical 64-bit value you expect. You've got some tables, the GDT and LDT, which we'll learn more about in the next section. And those have data about the particular segments, which is used to find a base address and add to the offset to ultimately translate through to a linear address. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, update our map of like all this stuff that I claim you're gonna learn by the end of the class. Well, first thing, our flags, you already knew that. So what's new? Segment selectors, segment selectors is what's new. And we're gonna you know, just keep chipping away at this picture and we're just gonna keep seeing more and more stuff from here.